I think queer Americans today can thank Frank Kameny for recognizing that uh, we're here and we're queer and we deserve our rights. Frank Kameny was a Harvard-trained astronomer with a PhD in astrophysics who was working for the U.S. Defense Department, helping build uh, space systems for what would soon become NASA. But then. The army found out that he was gay. Uh, he had been arrested with another man in a public restroom in San Francisco and very quickly lost his job. And what made him different was he was the first uh, of the victims of the lavender scare, as we now call it. He was the first to fight back. At the same time that Senator McCarthy was pursuing alleged communist and security risks within the State Department and the federal government, he and his allies were also pursuing sexual deviance at a rate even higher than they were going after uh, alleged communists. So they argued that if you were queer and working for the federal government, not only were you just immoral, but you were also a security risk because if you were queer, then you were necessarily secretive about your condition, as they would call it. And so that meant that Soviet agents, for example, uh, could then use that secret against you to acquire classified information. Uh, he was the first to file suit against the federal government and its discriminatory policies. And he would go on to create Washington's first gay lobbying group, the Mattachine Society of Washington. After I got going on the whole gay movement thing, which was starting in any formal sense in 1961, when I founded the Madison Society of Washington here and got into other things and we took on the government. Eventually I became the authority in the country on security clearances for gay people and military cases. And I have mounds and mounds and mounds of files at home, case after case after case. In those days you got either an, a, a dishonorable discharge or uh, an undesirable discharge. And so I used to fight a large number of cases of people uh, uh, being threatened with that kind of discharge. Frank Kameny turned to the Black Freedom Movement and saw what the NAACP was doing, what folks like Bayard Rustin was doing with his March on Washington in 63, and started adapting them for uh, this new fledgling movement called the homophile movements. The next year, the homophile movement begins marching. Frank Kameny begins marching with his organization outside the White House, um, outside uh, the Defense Department, outside uh, the State Department. The problem was the homophile movement wasn't making space for those who existed at the intersection of those two movements. So when you look at the photographs of those early marches in 1965 at the White House and other sites of federal power, almost all of the marchers are white uh, because they simply were not doing the work to recruit uh, people who may have already been activists in the Black Freedom Movement and also were queer. And as the 60s wore on and as individuality became more and more important uh, and as a new generation of activists began saying uh, you're excluding people frank Kameny wasn't able to adapt he didn't realize that he was holding back the movement it took stonewall to really begin an influx into what was then called the homophile movement and revolutionizing it and expanding it in size and scope to make it so it wasn't just a movement for white men wearing suit and tie, but instead a movement for everyone. It shows us not just the successes of how progress is made, but also the failures and how we can learn from the mistakes of the past. But as a matter of principle, because he was so certain that he was a victim of prejudice and he could not afford to let that stand. Uh, he really lived a life of, of poverty. Mm -hmm. 
I became interested in Frank Kameny's story when his name popped up as a related figure after I watched the film Milk about Harvey Milk. And I realized this was one of the grandfathers of the movement for queer liberation, and yet there wasn't a book written about him. Kameny died during the Obama administration, and fortunately he did receive the recognition and the thanks, but also the apology from the federal government or what it had done to Frank. When President Obama repealed uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, when he signed the legislation, Frank Kameny was there and he actually received the pen that President Obama used uh, to sign that piece of legislation. shows how long progress takes and how much work goes into uh, uh, creating change. We still don't have an Equality Act, which is necessary uh, to ensure that, that the decision is applied consistently despite uh, future administrations. And so we have to keep fighting, but also learn from the mistakes of people like Frank Kameny and ensuring that we're not leaving people behind uh, in that process.